Hi there guys, just going to show you some of the best Cydia tweaks available on iOS 5. I'm going to start off with Zephyr, it's available on the Big Boss repo, it's $2.99. So what it does, it gives you the ability to access your multitasking bar by a simple swipe up from the bottom like this. And there you have your multitasking bar, just simply swipe up, select any app. It also gives you the ability to swipe up to close apps, so a quick swipe up there, closes your app. When you're in an app, you can swipe up, briefly hold to bring up the multitasking bar, so it gives you that option. So we go into the settings for Zephyr. Find it there. So the swipe up from the bottom is dealt, dealt with here. So you can have it to close the app and the switcher as a combined action. So you swipe up quickly to close the app and you swipe up and hold to bring up the switcher. And you can have that switcher only if you prefer that. So now we're in an app, a quick swipe up just brings the switcher very quickly. If we change it back to close up and switcher, a quick swipe up brings us straight away to close the app. And we have to swipe up, hold briefly, and you have the multitasking bar, which is the one I prefer. Zephyr also has the ability to change apps by simply swiping left and right. So we go this way into the next app, again into the next app, just by simply swiping from the left or right side of your screen back and forth through your apps in sequence. Now the settings for this are quite numerous as well. Uh, you can change the number of fingers it requires, to up to four fingers to change uh, between your apps. When swiping like that you can change the sensitivity, uh, you can say the keyboard disables it, so if the keyboard's showing it in the app, it uh, it won't have that functionality of being able to just swipe one finger and, and switch the apps. And you can disable for individual applications, so any applications where you may need to swipe from the edge of the screen, and you don't want it to mistake it for a multitasking swipe, you can, you can disable it for that as well. Okay, so the next tweak I'm going to show you is called Allowed. It's available in the Big Boss repo for 99 cents, but that is an introductory price for three days only. And I believe today, March the 6th, is the third day, so you want to go grab that quick if you want it for the 99 cents. And this tweak reads your notifications out loud, which is fantastic for when you're driving. So I'll give you a quick demonstration. Um, if I grab a piece of text from Safari, let's just copy that. And then I'll go into my SMS and I will send a new message to myself. So if we just paste that in there, and I'll send that to myself and quit out to my home screen, it should read it. Sender, Ian Woodward. At magical time of year again, when everyone expects a new iPad to be right around the corner which in turn means an amassment of iPad 3 rumors clogging up our lives. Here's a quick guide to making sense of them. So there you go, the text message comes in and just gets read to you. It's so like I say, if you've got your phone in the cradle in your car while you're driving, you can just have your messages read, no danger of actually trying to read them yourself, uh, which, is, which is phenomenal. Uh, this app has a number of settings, so I'll just head into the settings app and show you those. So it's called Allowed. So first of all you can enable or disable the, uh, the app which is perfect for me. I just disable it most of the time and just enable it for driving which is good. You've got your voice settings here. So you've got a number of different voices to choose from in English and then you've got a number of different languages supported as well. So that's good. You can have a custom rate so it can speak quicker or slower. A custom volume so it'll always talk at a particular volume no matter what your device volume is on. If you have that disabled, it just takes the device volume. And you can suppress the original notification sound. So instead of it uh, making normal notification sound followed by the voice, it can just go straight to the voice, which I have set up. Uh, you can choose which applications to have it in and which not to have it in. You can set up notification rules, so you can have it speak, speak immediately or wait for an activator event. Uh, you can disrespect moots, which uh, only have it read when you've got headphones in, only when charging, and so on. Uh, the activation rules. So when you perform the activation rule you've got set up, you can have it always perform, or only perform when you've, uh, it follows the same rules as your notification rules. 
the custom formatting is just uh, the way it reads. Dynamic is the best one. You can have it read just the title, just the message, or the title and message, or dynamically change depending on which app it's reading from. And you can set up your activator actions. So you can invoke an activator instruction. So the speak last notification one's a very handy one there, and the stop speaking. So I've got my speak last notification for a double tap on a status bar, like so. Sender, Ian Woodward. It's that magical so time see off it here again. To speak again. When everyone expects a single the new tap iPad to be it. right around the corner. Like so. So a single tap stops it speaking. And you can get system state and date and time read to you if you so desire. So that's allowed. It's currently 99 cents in the Big Boss repo, but that's an introductory price and will be going up. So check it out if that's going to be handy for you, especially handy when driving. Okay, now I'm going to take a look at IntelliScreen X. It's available on the ModMyO repo for $9.99, and it's definitely well worth it. Increases the functionality of your notification center. So I'm going to take a brief look of how I have it set up, and then I'll take a look at all the settings. So this is it. As you can see at the top here, you have this, uh, this widget. It shows the time and date, and it has a ticker showing your various feeds. So I have Twitter, Facebook, and RSS feeds set up, so it just scrolls through those randomly. And you can also swipe to scroll through them yourself. Now one of the great features of IntelliScreen X is called the top drawer. So what that is, is you can pull down to reveal more widgets that you have set up to appear in the top drawer. And one of these widgets that, is, that comes with IntelliScreen X are the uh, toggles you see here. So they look very nice, it helps you to turn your Wi-Fi on or off. A swipe to the right will reveal your Wi-Fi IP address, your free memory and such data. And a swipe to the other side enables you to do the brightness settings. So that's a nice little widget to have included. So we just turn the Wi-Fi back on. So yeah, that's the top drawer. So when you actually bring notifications to enter down again, you can see it defaults to not show the top drawer, and then you have to pull down. And you can bring the top drawer in, or just put it back. So next, you have the ability to tap on the title bar of any particular thing like mail or reminders to collapse it down, which can save you some space if you don't need to view the content straight away and then tap it again to open it back up. On the mail messages, you can tap an individual mail message and you can read the entire message and tap it again, collapse it down to the, the preview you have. Uh, while it's opened up, you have the, the ability to mark it as read, uh, open it within the mail client, or simply delete it, which I'll do now. So deleted mail from IntelliScreen X is deleted off your mail server as well, so that's very handy, it syncs up. That's pretty cool. Uh, you can swipe one way or the other to bring up various pages that IntelliScreen X has available. These can be set up in the settings for IntelliScreen X. So by swiping this way, I have my RSS feeds. Uh, you can pull it down to refresh it manually, or you can have it set up to refresh as often or as infrequently as you like. If you tap on a story within your RSS feeds, uh, it will open up in, in Safari's Reader app, which is a very clean way to read your articles. just makes it really easy, really nice to read. When you're done with that, click Done. It takes you straight back to where you were. So I've got that set up on the left side of the Notification Center, and to the right side, I've got my Facebook and my Twitter feeds. So that's a quick look at how I have it set up. So if I just go in, we'll have a look at the settings. So let's come out of that, find Telescreen X. So the visible Intellescreen X pages and the hidden pages is where you can set up which pages you want. So for example, if I edit this, uh, let's say I don't want a Facebook on there, but I do want mail. Um, perhaps I want the RSS, the other side of the notification center. So there we have mail to the left of the notification center and Twitter and RSS feeds to the right. Uh, these changes take place immediately, so I have a whole page dedicated to mail on the left, and then I have my Twitter, and then RSS feeds on the right, and no Facebook page anymore. So, 
that's how you set up your pages. Uh, go to last open page, if we switch that on, when you pull down this set telescreen X, maybe we'll have it over here. When we close it and open it again, we go back to that same page. Uh, if you turn that feature off, when you open it again, whichever page you leave it on, we'll leave it on the RSS feed and open it again, it goes back to the main page. So that's that. There's numerous other options here in general, they're fairly self-explanatory. Now let's carry on down. Um, actually I forgot one, quite important one, show on lock screen is available, so if I lock my phone, you can see we have the, av the availability of IntelliScreen X on the lock screen. All the same functions that you get as when your phone's unlocked, so that's pretty cool if you want that. And you have the ability to turn that option off. So show on lock screen's off. And now IntelliScreen X swipe down does nothing, it's not available. So that's obviously for security. If uh, <laughs> if you're going to leave your phone lying around a lot and you don't want people having access to anything on your phone, then you're going to want to turn that option off. So that's quite important. So we carry on down. Push notifications can be handled any way you fancy. Lock screen seller back capacity. So you saw when I when I had IntelliScreen X open on the lock screen, it had a see-through clear look. So that's that's down to this setting here. You can turn that up and have a solid background to make it easier to read. You have status bar icons added. So if you look at my status bar, you can see there's a, a little envelope icon. That's for the mail. So if I turn it off, that goes away. So these are handled by IntelliScreen X. Silent mode on. So if I put my phone into silent mode, you'll see a new icon appear that's not normally there. There it is, and obviously turn it off, it won't be there. Turn it on, and it appears, so my phone's in silent mode. And we'll just take it back out of silent. Your message quick compose, you can choose whichever message client you use. I use Byte SMS, so that is here in IntelliScreen X. Right down here in the bottom right, your quick compose button. So mine's set up to take me to Byte SMS and begin, begin the quick compose for that, so that's quite handy. And you can say how long in advance you're alerted about calendar events and reminders and so on and so forth. But that's not the only settings for IntelliScreen X. If we go to notification settings, this is where you configure all of your top shelf uh, IntelliScreen X settings. So as you can see I have these three at the moment. So, for example, if you wanted the quick settings to be all of, always available, you'd hit edit, bring the quick settings down to just in notification center. So now when you pull IntelliScreen X down, the quick settings are always visible. And the it's only the flashlight and color lapse I have in the uh, in the top drawer there. And you can configure that any way you want. So we could we could, for example, we could take the weather widget and put that into the top drawer. So let's put that in the top drawer right there. Now the weather widget's no longer there by default, and you pull down the top drawer, and there's your weather widget available in the top drawer. So you can do that with any of your widgets. You can have them display in the top drawer or not. So that's uh, IntelliScreen X. It's on the Mob Meyer repo for $9.99. Definitely one of the best iOS 5. So the next tweak I'm going to take a look at is Zeppelin. It's available in the Mob My Eye repo for free. So if you take a look in the top left of my screen here, you'll see I have the yellow Angry Bird in place of the uh, carrier logo. So this is courtesy of Zeppelin. If we go into the settings, scroll down, find Zeppelin. Here it is. You can simply have the, th have the tweak enabled or disabled, and then choose your theme. So I've got quite a few in here. And to switch to a new theme, you simply select it, and it instantaneously changes. No need for a respring. So that's pretty fantastic. And there's just a ton of themes available for free in Cydia. And you find those by going to Sections, Add-on, Zeppelin, and then just find a theme you like. So that's Zeppelin, Mob My Repo, for free. It's a great little tweak to have.